Hello, and thank you for tuning into this lecture presented by the Miami World Music Festival. My name is Dr. Cassandra Eisenreich, and I am a flutist and music educator based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In this lecture, I will be discussing the importance of purposeful movement for all people through a special approach called Eurythmics. Developed by Emil Jacques Delcos, this is a playful, experiential approach to teaching and learning music. It is a process for awakening, developing, and refining innate musicality through improvisation, ear training, and rhythmic movement, often called Eurythmics. These elements may seem like they are strictly musical, but this work is cross-curricular in nature with an emphasis on whole person education. Dalcro said, this is an education in and through music, indicating benefits well beyond the musical elements. The word Eurythmics directly translates to good flow, something that many people strive to embody in both their personal and professional lives. Positive psychologist Csikszentmihalyi defines flow as a state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. Participating in a rhythmics class at any age is truly all-encompassing because the body is used as the musical instrument. Eurythmics classes are multi-sensory and highly involve and engage individuals in aural, visual, kinesthetic, and tactile experiences, often simultaneously. Interactive games and activities are explored through individual, partner, and group work. These varied learning contexts inspire creativity, broaden perspective, lead to discovery, and help to build stronger and deeper connections. Dalcro said, I know because I have experienced. So how can this type of music education support developmental milestones in young children, have a profound impact on older adults, and enhance artistry in the most advanced musicians? From the first day of life, sound, motion, and touch are used to engage, distract, initiate play, and soothe infants. Before babies understand words, they come to understand tones. Simply exaggerating emotions and introducing varying word lengths with baby talk provides a very musical experience from the start. This is a natural instinct that is often accompanied by finger play and or tickling. Before babies can move, they are moved by others. A simple rocking motion might provide a calming sensation for sleep, where a slight bounce might encourage playtime. These movements are also natural instincts that are often accompanied by chanting or singing. Rolling is one of our first forms of independent mobility as infants. To encourage babies to roll, parents often speak with great inflection, sing, and or use some type of noise-making device to initiate interest and motivate the child to engage the body into action. Rolling is a complicated movement that requires the two sides of the body to do opposite things simultaneously. This is important for the brain-body connection and leads to more complicated and fundamental movements such as sitting, crawling, and walking. Crawling is considered the first form of independent movement. Again, to encourage babies to crawl and even begin walking, parents often speak with great inflection from the other side of the room. They may sing and or use some type of noise-making device or toy to initiate interest and motivate the child to engage the body into action. Once children have developed the ability to crawl, they have learned the magical combination of a cross-lateral movement, which gets both sides of the body working together to develop and enhance the vestibular system or balance system, sensory system, cognition, problem-solving skills, and coordination. This is just the beginning of a world of discovery and development that can only be made more exciting with music. Early childhood is a time when children learn about the world primarily through the process of play. In Eurythmics, play-based experiences are often introduced with familiar movements and tempi. In an initial class for children, it is common for a teacher to ask an individual student to simply take a walk. 
In most cases, there's nothing overly demanding or uncomfortable about this request, since the movement itself is usually understood and is often already in a state of flow. After watching a child's movement carefully for a few moments, a teacher will often improvise on an instrument, typically the piano, to match the tempo, energy, and style of what is being presented by the student. Major, minor, modal, and contemporary harmonies are implemented throughout these classes so that students receive an aural bath of diverse tonalities. Using music to support the movement helps children to establish, reinforce, and refine intricate fine and gross motor activities while also being immersed in an artful experience. Children feel empowered because they are essentially in charge of the music, which is quite motivating for them. Choosing to hit play on a pre-recorded piece of music can be fun and educational, but it often lacks the personal connection and individual attention to detail that improvisation has to offer these student-led activities. With improvisation, variations on a walk or any locomotor or non-locomotor movement can be introduced by changing one element of the music to see how it influences the movement or by changing the movement to see how it might inspire the music. Stories can be brought to life during this process by using imaginative play and improvised musical cues to discover things that one might find as they embark on their walking journey. Here is a brief excerpt of a music and movement story that encourages imaginative play. In a classroom setting, I would be improvising, allowing the children to write the storyline by sharing their ideas. What was that? Any guesses? Birds! It's so nice to hear the birds singing to us in the morning. I wonder what else we'll discover on this walk. Let's keep going. It's really nice to walk through the woods with friends and family. What's that up ahead? Is that a puddle? I love jumping into puddles. Can you jump into a puddle with me? If there's no puddle there, can you pretend? Can you take a big jump, land in the water, and one big stomp? Let's head back to our trail. What's the temperature like outside today? I know sometimes in Pittsburgh, it can feel like winter one day and spring or summer the next. Wait, what's that? Ahead, on the bushes. Oh. Wow, it's a beautiful butterfly. Oh. Can you spread your wings like that butterfly? Can you lift them up and down slowly? Pretending to fly from one bush to the next and gently landing on a beautiful flower. What a special moment that was. Let's get back on the trail. This is so much fun. We can't go home now. We're just getting started. In fact, what's that tiny creature there behind the flowers? It's a cute little bunny. Can you hop like a bunny? Hop, 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 hop. Oh, bunnies must get tired awfully quickly. So far, we heard a bird sing, flapped our wings like a butterfly, jumped into a puddle, and hopped like a bunny. I know. Let's look up. Wow, when you look up, it's like another world. Look at those tiny buds on the tree. Let's look the other way. And there, a bird's nest. I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty dizzy looking up. There, that's much better. Let's get back to our walking adventure. There is so much to explore when you go outside. 
so many things to see and hear and do. I'm actually getting a little tired. Are you? Will you take a big stretch up with me? I think I need to take a break and sit right here on this rock. Hmm, I wonder what there is to see here. We might catch a flower blooming. Look in the grass. Can you pretend to be a flower blooming up from the ground? Slowly stand up from the rock and put your arms up to the sky. Can you wave your petals in the wind? Participating in each of these activities improves balance and coordination, leads to more challenging movements, and immerses children in an artistic and imaginative playful experience. Starting with a child's natural tempo supported by improvised music can lead the teacher to make informed decisions regarding appropriate pre-recorded selections of music that might reinforce the concepts and or skill sets already introduced. Physical activity is essential to healthy aging, and mobility is essential for anyone to get through the day. Getting out of bed, moving from room to room, preparing and eating food, and leaving the house are all necessary in order for adults to function in society on their own. Falls are a leading cause of immobility in older adults due to lower body weakness and difficulty with walking and balance, among many other things. Once mobility is an issue and individuals become dependent on others, it can have a profound impact on social and psychological well-being in addition to physical stability. Since Eurythmics is a music-based movement experience, it engages both motor and cognitive functions simultaneously, which is particularly beneficial for improving gait, balance, and executive functions. All individuals have their own specific tempi associated with particular movements, just like children. With older adults, their movements are often slower in nature and are not always consistent in terms of timing within the beat. A tempo initiated by an older adult might begin slower, but has the potential to increase in speed and control once music is added. Sometimes familiar music can be used to awaken emotions, stimulate the memory, and encourage movement. Older adults often need extended practice exercising some of the most fundamental movements, such as walking, bending, and controlling objects. The famous saying, if you don't use it, you lose it, rings true. In addition to the most basic act of walking, which is a locomotor movement, there are also non-locomotor movements and manipulative skills that are often experienced in a rhythmics class. These natural movements are essentially different ways of feeling and or keeping a steady beat, while some of them, such as galloping and skipping, are also directly linked with other rhythms. Not only does steady beat competency impact fine and gross motor skills, it helps with spatial awareness, pattern recognition, and is closely connected to early language and literacy development. The following lists are not exhaustive, but include some of the most frequently explored movements in your rhythmics classes. Locomotor movements are those that travel through space. When participating in any type of locomotor activity for the first time, groups often unintentionally resort to following one another in circle form. When a circle is created, the energy of the group is what drives the movement of each individual. It takes the initiative and the creativity away from each person. When traveling through space in a Eurythmics experience, Individuals are always encouraged to take their own path and explore the space in the room. Here are some locomotor movements that individuals may experience. Walking, marching, jogging, running, small jumps, big jumps, hopping on one foot, sliding, galloping, and skipping. Non-locomotor movements do not travel through space. They use the available space in any direction around the axis of the body. Here are some non-locomotor movements that individuals may experience. Clapping, swaying, swinging, twisting, 
bending, stretching. Manipulative movements are motor skills that use hands, feet, or other body parts to move or manipulate an object. Here are some manipulative movements that individuals may experience. Tossing, rolling, bouncing, catching. Walking and clapping are some of the first things focused on in an initial Eurythmics experience at any age and at any level. For musicians and non-musicians alike, these familiar movements are about much more than simply placing the hands together or stepping at the right time to execute a steady beat or rhythmic pattern. The clap or step becomes a physical representation of what is heard by embodying the appropriate time, space, and energy suggested by the music. The gesture and shape created are actually just as important as the accuracy of the point of contact. If the feet are not actively in motion while clapping, bending the knees plays an important role in keeping the entire body engaged, alert, and informed. For example, if a teacher improvises or plays music and asks students to clap or step the note duration heard, they would need to keep their hands or feet or body in motion after the point of contact until the next note begins. In addition, the knees would bend slightly at the start of every note. If we compare some of the most basic note values, you can see and feel the difference between a quarter note and half note. If the tempo stays the same, half notes should look twice as big as the quarter notes, and so on and so forth. If we relate clapping or stepping to speaking, performing these movements without space to show duration, without moving through space to show direction, or without varying the level of energy to show expression, it is equivalent to monotone speech. If we relate clapping or stepping to music, performing these movements without space to show duration, without moving through space to show direction, or without varying the level of energy to show expression, it is equivalent to a lack of musicality, simply just the notes on the page. Presenting these movements with this monotone approach really only gives the initial point of contact in time for any given note value. It does not represent duration, direction, or any element of expression. Providing visual examples for clapping, like catching fireflies and letting them go, drawing hearts in the air, and tracing rainbows can help beginners show duration, explore space through various levels, and encourage more expressive qualities of movement. This multi-sensory experience allows participants to truly feel the entire duration of each note value and how they are related to one another. This directly translates to practice and performance for musicians because they begin to embody note values and other concepts and skill sets through rich and meaningful experiences which then authentically inform and shape artistry and musicality. The essence of this work is rooted in musical play. There are specific games that are often included in Eurythmics experiences. They include replacement, follow, quick reaction, and canon. A replacement game is when students listen attentively to what is happening in the music presented and develop enough skill and control to instantaneously use those abilities in new and varied contexts. For example, at the most basic level, a teacher could improvise or play music representing a familiar meter and ask students to keep a steady beat in whatever way feels most natural to them. The teacher then encourages the participants to find another way to keep the beat. The expectation would be that individuals would get creative using different body parts and various levels. A follow game is when students listen attentively to what is happening in the music, are sensitive to the changes they hear, and react accordingly in their own time. What they hear in the music influences how they will use time, space, and energy to show a physical representation of the sound through the body. For example, a teacher could improvise or play music representing a basic meter and ask students to bounce a ball on the first beat of every measure. As the teacher seamlessly and without any indication changes meter after a series of phrases, 
the expectation would be that participants would eventually hear the shift in accent and duration within each measure and adjust when they need to bounce the ball for the new meter. A quick reaction game is when students listen attentively to what is happening in the music, are sensitive to the changes they hear, and react accordingly at a specific moment in time based on previously established cues. The reaction to the change is usually cued by something presented in the music or by a vocal cue presented by the teacher. For example, a teacher could improvise or play music representing a basic meter and ask students to bounce a ball on the first beat of every measure. The teacher could start with one meter and cue the participants to change to another previously established meter, for example, switching from two to three. The teacher may use a word such as change, a sound out of the context of the music being played, such as two clashing high notes on the piano, or they may choose to use the actual number of the new meter. The expectation would be that participants would hear the cue and quickly and effortlessly react within the beat to make the change in time. There are two types of canon games, interrupted and true. An interrupted canon game is when students listen attentively to specific rhythmic and or melodic elements in the music and essentially echo the patterns heard. Echoing can take on many forms in a Eurythmics class and can be explored through diverse experiences such as singing, clapping, stepping, or playing instruments. For example, a teacher could improvise or play four beat rhythmic patterns and ask the student to echo what they hear by clapping or stepping. When the pattern is being performed by the students, the teacher is silent and in preparation for the next example. True canon differs from interrupted canon in that the teacher continuously provides the examples for the students without a break in the phrasing. Individuals have to echo what they hear as they are simultaneously listening for the next pattern to execute, multitasking at its finest. It is clear that this type of education supports training musicians to channel and transfer the knowledge and skill sets learned for their own personal musicianship. However, this work undeniably serves and educates the whole person. These playful games and exercises help develop attention and awareness. They transform attention into concentration with focused mental effort supported by visual, aural, kinesthetic, and tactile opportunities. The varied repetition in these experiences helps to develop memory, recall, and retrieval. These games and exercises transform concentration into active and responsive listening, providing opportunities for individuals to demonstrate understanding in multiple ways. They help to develop teamwork, cooperation, communication, problem-solving skills, and ensemble due to the social aspect of the partner and group work. One of the many unique things about this work is that nuance, an artful approach in both practice and performance, is always at the core of each experience and is fostered in every moment from the very beginning. Because what is music without it? Without personal expression as a performer or personal connection as a listener? Regardless of how we individually connect with music, Eurythmics experiences can have a profound and positive impact on the physical, cognitive, and social emotional development and overall well being of children and adults of all ages. So, never be afraid to embrace the urge to move your music. It might actually be just what you need to find your flow in another aspect of your life. Thank you for taking the time to join me for this lecture. For more information, or to find a class, please visit www.dalcrosusa.org.